Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brooke, that gratitude guy, with, of course, another guest on the Gratitude Podcast interview for today uh, regarding the pandemic. And today's guest is a friend of mine that I've known for, gosh, I just almost hate to admit it because then you can do the math, but I like, like right around 50 years. And one of my favorite lines is, where do you go to get a friend that you've had for 50 years? What store can you purchase that in? Anyway, Chris Sunberg from Mercer Island, Washington. Chris, welcome to the podcast. Good morning, David. Good morning, good morning. So let me start you out with a, a question. Uh, this is really my whole intent here is to get uh, information and some thoughts and ideas from other people that might help others or one another. So what is your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic? Well, one thing my uh, dear old dad used to say uh, is uh, don't worry about something until you have something to worry about. Oh, I like that. So as one of your uh, earlier guests, I think, mentioned, uh, one of the things I try and do is stay away from advertiser-supported media whose business model uh, seems to be based on uh, promoting fear and anxiety to the mm -hmm. point where uh, you know, they get everybody's amygdalas jacked up so that they get the maximum number of eyeballs watching their, their content right. at any one time. Right. So instead of that, um, I found that uh, what this situation has done has really uh, given me and Nancy uh, some real quality time to mm. do things that we wouldn't other have otherwise seem to have time for. Like, um, we're going on long daily walks and we're uh, That's great. doing jigsaw puzzles, you know, mm. whoever would have had time to, to do that, you know, uh, except point. for this sort of uh, forced isolation that we're undergoing right now. That's a great point. And uh, what, say that again, your dad's quote, I love that. Uh, don't worry about something until you have something to worry about. Something to worry about. I really like that. That's good. So during, this would certainly be called an uncertain time. So during this uncertain time, what are you, what do you find you're most grateful for? Well, obviously health, but um, secondarily, I think that uh, this situation has given us a good opportunity to uh, review and contemplate uh, some social and economic practices that maybe were uh, overdue for reconsideration. Um, mm -hmm. For example, on the, the most personal level, uh, I think we can pretty much agree that the uh, handshake greeting is done. Yeah. Uh, you know, on a larger level, uh, I'd say we can pretty much agree that the cruise ship industry is pretty much done also. Yeah. Uh, on the national level, uh, I think it gives us a good opportunity to uh, reconsider and perhaps uh, make some improvements in our emergency preparedness and also uh, mm -hmm. economic self-reliance. Good point. Good point. And, and speaking of that, you mentioned uh, Nancy, of course, is your wife and the, and the jigsaw puzzles and the walks and things like that. And I'm thinking about, I found some really good ones on this question. Any other thoughts or tips or ideas for things people can be doing while they're kind of housebound? Well, um, you know, certainly you can binge watch on your favorite cable or Netflix shows. Uh, I've always been a reader. And, uh, for me, you know, anytime that I have the opportunity to read, it's like uh, mm -hmm. bonus time. And I've got a stack of books that, you know, happy to dive into yeah yeah books are i've heard that one too and you mentioned the walks too. think about some of the exercises uh you mentioned a really good point about that the jigsaw puzzles and spending quality time with nancy and i think another one that somebody mentioned the other day which i just i went wow what a great thing is that something called family dinner time has actually made a comeback when everybody's at home and you and i grew up in an era where it was just part of the deal every night there was four or five or six i had seven in my family and you sat down for family dinner you kind of digested the day and and debriefed and all that kind of thing and it's kind of making a comeback so so that's excellent those are good yeah, i i agree i think uh i think this is really an opportunity to reevaluate you know what what it means to be uh part of a family, part of a city, part of a society, uh, how we interact, what we do, uh, 
how we respond uh, and uh, interact with our loved ones. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, there's, there's lots of opportunities here, uh, you That's know, true. once we get past all of the, the fear and anxiety. That's really true. That's true. A lot of silver linings, I think. And so last question is really even before this, if not through this time right now, do you have sort of a quote or a philosophy or something that would kind of describe your approach to not only handling this, but maybe even life? I loved your dad's quote too, but anything else that's sort of more overarching that kind of directs Chris? Uh, just try and uh, live by the golden rule. Mm. And for those who don't know what that is, I certainly know it well. What is the golden rule? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Yeah, that's so true. So true. Good, good, thoughtful stuff. Of course, I'm not surprised coming from counselor. So, well, listen, thank you so much. I appreciate you being part of the podcast and uh, I will be chatting with you soon. You're welcome, David. Take care.